Take a look at what uh, the statistics have to say first of all. And uh, we'll begin with uh, Belgium matches played, goals 4 14, scored against 5, penalty goal, on goals for 1. But I know your, your concern is mostly France. So, France, so far they've played 5 matches, 9 goals for, 9 goals scored, scored uh, and then goals against is 4, penalty goal 2, on goals uh, for 1, open play goals 6, set piece goals. Are you happy with those statistics? Do you think these are good statistics for them? I think it's fine. They've been again. They've been playing a bit more defensively, yes. uh, and so that's why in the end you just need to score one more than the opponent in the end, right? Yes. But what's interesting actually in the previous one you just showed about Belgium yes. is they're a real striking force, and okay. that's probably the first time yes. that the French team is going to be properly tested by an yes. attacking team, because they're the biggest team. And so far, France has been facing Australia, Peru, Denmark. Uh, Messi, but not an organized Argentinian team, and then Uruguay without Cavani. Yes, that's not that strong. Now these guys in front of you are going to have Lukaku, uh, Hazard, Kevin De Bruyne. That's yes. a big. That's going to be the big test. Okay, let's take a look at uh, some of the key players for just a moment. We'll just go through. Then we. There we go. So Kylian Mbappe. Still the man, still the man, still the danger. Able to create out of nothing. Against, uh, even against a set defense, he was able to create some, some find some space, yes. create opportunities for his teammates. Fantastic player. Still believe he's one of the top five in the world. 19 year old, you can't imagine he's just 19 years old. And he has, he, the other thing is that he's not just, like, just, it's not just pace. It's like he's extremely clever in his movements. He's, he's, he's extremely clever. When he's receiving the ball, he already knows where it's going, whether it's yes. for himself or a teammate. Yeah. Fantastic player, all round player. Really, yeah. really beautiful player. Passing is also quite good. He's there. He's there. He's not. He's not just a lonely guy. We don't see. He's not necessarily. He's been. He's been playing for his teammates as much as for himself. He's been creating chances all around. And even like, if you remember in the Uruguay at some point, he's even like he's running all the side and he's created that cross. And then neither Griezmann nor Giroud has been able to follow, and so he's crossing for no one. But he was creating for others at that moment again, again and again. Okay. Kylian Mbappe five deliveries there on penalty. Of course, uh, going back to the home page. Just got this one now. We take, just get a sense of the statistics. Now we take a look at the formation, which is very important. The composition of the team. Uh, in the last game uh, against Uruguay, they were able to have a formation of 4-2-3-1. Belgium has been focused on the 3-4 uh, setup. Yeah, 3-4-3, more or less. 3-4-3 yeah. se setup. Of course, that has been one of their st strong points so far in the tournament. That ability to be able to have uh, playing Lukaku on the right and Eden Hazard and then now Kevin De Bruyne in the, in the middle there. So, who do you think will be able to, what would the players you think will be key for, and which formation do you think uh, Didier Deschamps will adopt today? So, Didier Deschamps is probably going to stay, okay. stay, stay exactly, pretty much what, what he's been doing. Okay. To, um, yeah, the minute? Yeah. Yeah. He, he's going he's gonna, to he's gonna keep the same formation he's been having pretty much all tournament. So, yes. you're going to have, you're going to have Loris at the back, if you have Loris for me. Yeah. yeah. Top there. Then one the four. He's going to have uh, Hernandez, who's probably also on the side, uh, nice. as the left. So the, the, back, the back line is going to be fairly stable. Umtiti is also on your side. Very good. You the, get, the you, fans yeah, are everyone. saying that Umtiti yeah, will be... <laughs> <laughs> will be uh, Varane yeah, is know. also on your side. Can I get Varane for that there one? There we go. Um, and then Pavar is on your side. I'll yes. get Pavar too. Remember that wonderful goal. Wonderful goal from Pavar. So yes. again, the, the, the point against Pavar, it might be, if you look at that back line, very strong since the beginning. Now, if there is a weak link, who is that going to be? It might be Pavar. He was a bit shaky in some of the games previously. Um, is he going to be able to handle uh, is he going to be able to handle uh, Azar if he's in a 1v1? That's yeah. going to be that's going to be, be one of the key of the game, and that's one thing that Martinez may actually try to play on, okay. which is try to get Azar on the 1v1. So play on one side, then shift to the other because side, and so you have the 1v1. Hazard, they know each other quite well. Yeah. So because if 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 Azar is, is staying in that 10 zone, Conte is going to be following him. He's like he's, he's a teammate. I'm I'm training with that guy every day of the <laughs> week. Absolutely. Now arriving at the World Cup, I'm just going to follow you, just I've been doing all the time. Now, if I'm playing against Pavar, it's a bit of a different, it's a different matchup. So that might be the mismatch on the French side. But anyway, that's why Conte might be even adding up to help Pavar uh, defensively. Okay. The rest of the team is, is, is kind of like similar to what it's, it's been. Uh, one of the key questions is, is, uh, is our Dia uh, Deschamps uh, going to put back Matuidi, who was suspended yes. in the quarterfinal? Yes. Uh, most probably. That's so my guess. Toliso will be he, he probably will not uh, put back Toliso. He might, he might fit in Toliso later on in the game. But at the beginning, at least to keep that defensive, yeah. defensive structure and, and not concede. Because the one thing he doesn't want is, is exactly what, um, uh, what, what we were saying is if Belgium is scoring first, it's going to be tricky because these guys can take the, can take the counter at us. So okay. he will not want to concede. And so Matuidi, for that matter, is much safer because he will be able 
yeah. to track back along the line. Track you will back. be able to go back in the center to overload okay. the center if need be, because if you only keep the center on and, 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 and safe, then that guy is able to do that very well. So Look, I think he's going to put Matuidi back. This is an attack finally on defense. What do you think? What, how will they be able to neutralize? Because looking at Lukaku, he's been playing wide. His traditional role is a center forward and he's yeah. playing largely on the, on the wide. How will they be able to neutralize Lukaku? He's been, I think, one of the standout players in the tournament so far, specifically for the Red Devils' uh, attack. So, so, so he, he definitely played on the right against Brazil. Yes. I think it was a specific setup from Martinez to say, okay, Marcelo is going to go up, and I'm going to, I'm going to have um, Lukaku just behind him, so the space is there, and I, I, I send uh, Lukaku with a through ball, and then there is space. If he's still playing on the right, then. It's going, to be a, it's going to be down to Hernandez to actually control that or, again, Matuidi. double up. Can I get Matuidi to help me further mm -hmm. so that I have two guys on that right side mm -hmm. and, and kind of block that space? If Lukaku is against uh, Umtiti and Varane, they, might, they probably will be able to, to contain the guy, but he's probably going to get the one or two chances. And then the question, is that, does that chance go in or yeah. doesn't it? That's <laughs> one and Sang Hero is Pogba, of course. He's just been doing the bare minimum, but of course he's been doing a lot. He's playing it, stringing those passes just as usual as normally does when he sits back. So he's actually been, uh, I think he's interesting enough, he, he, he's done less than what people expected, but he's done actually more than people think. Right. Uh, he's been creating chances over and over again. Like, you know, if you think about um, in the group stages, he's the one creating the pass. He's the one, he's the one with the last touch before the goal against Australia. He's the one uh, sending against Argentina. He's the one sending Mbappe on, on the So he's been creating a lot, and he's also been doing a lot of defensive work. His exceptions are fairly good. Uh, so he's doing a lot of the workload. But again, you, what you want of that guy most is, is less defensive potentially and have, have him a bit more up front. Use that creativity yes. to create those chances. So that's why also the Matuidi Pogba made, makes sense because if they knew at some point you're like, you know, I'm going to cover up for you to go up. Right, right. There is the ability to have some switch and then use that creative of Pogba. Who's going to find that pass for Giro Griezmann and Mbappe? He's going to see it. Okay. Thank you very much, Yuan. So hopefully Michael Kinyi, Pogba will score, maybe at least. This you, sh you should have seen the reaction of the Belgian ambassador when you're doing all. He was cringing with every tactic that he's put. He's saying, "Oh, okay, really?" Immediately, Mr. Martinez, to yes. tell him <laughs> what's going on here. <laughs> that that will be a good one. I believe there are, there are more winners there. No? Right, Mike. Let's yes. take a look.